Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it is responsible for killing tens of thousands of people and yet continues to be shipped worldwide from Yorkshire. Gramoxone, which contains the deadly substance Paracot, is one of the most toxic herbicides in the world. Produced by the multinational Syngenta, it has poisoned people all over the world. The company says it's safe if used properly, but this programme has obtained hundreds of secret company documents which show that Syngenta knew their own safety data was flawed. Not only did they know, they continued to sell the herbicide because company documents prove it was so profitable. And a warning, this exclusive report from our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, deals with issues of suicide, which you may find distressing. It was 2014 when Gamini, a farmer in Sri Lanka, like thousands of others, got the worst possible news. His daughter, Shashikala, had drunk the herbicide Gramoxone. She was 16. <laughs> Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, nestling in the Pennine foothills, this is where they make Gramoxone, containing the deadly substance Paracot. It's one of the most effective weed killers, of huge benefit to farmers the world over. The multinational Syngenta owns the Huddersfield plant, the only place in Europe still manufacturing the lethal herbicide, proudly opening its doors to local students. What they don't say is that Gramoxone is so toxic, it's been banned in the UK and EU for years, but they still export it from Yorkshire worldwide, where it has killed tens of thousands of people and continues to do so. Death by Gramoxone is lingering and painful. There is no antidote. Sold in bottles, which critics say look like soft drinks. Children can drink it by mistake. Adults across the world use it to end their lives. The best comparison I could think of, if I went to my village and handed around a bottle of sarin nerve agent to every household and said, look after it, be safe with it, don't let anyone get close to it. And imagine having 40 years, that bottle of sarin sitting in all those cupboards. And that's the equivalent of what happened by handing out these pesticides. It, it's really that dangerous. That is a valid equivalent, sarin. You know, we have pesticides which are a thousand times safer, 10,000 times safer than those compounds. Accidental ingestion, suicide, tens of thousands of gramoxone deaths. Some UN experts say it is hundreds of thousands. It's been on the market for decades, uh, despite countless thousands, hundreds of thousands of deaths around the world. You've called it the worst of the worst. Indeed, it, it is one of the most acutely toxic pesticides that's on the market. Just a few tablespoons is, uh, is deadly. And equally uh, concerning is the vast volume of, of exports that are coming out of the UK. We've come to Derbyshire to meet Professor John Halings. Well, I'll tell you what, Alex, I can't sleep at night at the moment because this has reached... A new He's finally going public about Gramoxone after almost half a century of trying to force the industry to make it safer. It's the same what has happened over the last 40 years and they're still dying. The story begins decades ago at Gellert's Hill, Syngenta's Berkshire research base. As far back as the 1970s, its predecessor company ICI wanted to put an emetic, a vomiting agent, into Gramoxone to try and make it safer. Secret company documents, never made public till now, show that by the late 1980s they feared it was so lethal everyone would just ban it. The major threats to the continued profitability of our business are the acute oral toxicity and the external perception that this gives the product. Long before that, John Halings had been called in to try to make Gramoxone safer. There'd already been a recommendation of increasing the emetic by fivefold, even before I had even started. More than 40 years on, after tens of thousands more deaths, John Halings had another meeting with Syngenta 
the company he used to work for and left on good terms. I think there was a lot of um, jaw dropping in that meeting. A lot of the new people on the block did not know that there'd been a big problem. But tonight we can reveal that for all those decades, Syngenta and its predecessor companies had safer versions on the shelf, ready to go, but only if Gramoxone got banned. A memo from way back in 1990 reads, Much work on safer formulations has already been done and a number have been progressed to a state where they could, at a cost, be introduced to markets. And this would provide a basket of options to offer when faced with a regulatory crisis. In plain English, we can stop the mass death, but only if we face a ban. Syngenta inherited this policy when it took over production in 2000, and it appears that it has followed it for 21 years. John Haling says it all comes down to money. Undoubtedly, the, the profit before safety, I think is a trend that has, has gone on in a lot of industries. But here you're talking about people's lives. Just two years ago, a senior Syngenta executive wrote, We flatly disagree with any suggestion that in developing this product, that Syngenta and its predecessors would have had any motive other than to best address the ingestion risk. But Greenpeace Unearthed, Public Eye and this programme now have a slew of secret company documents never made public until tonight. They prove Syngenta's predecessor companies refused to make Gramoxone safer because it would be too expensive. The introduction on a global basis would destroy group profit. And none of the alternative formulations currently available offer an economically acceptable solution to the suicide problem. So Syngenta's claim two years ago that money has nothing to do with the failure to make Gramoxone safer is false. They say they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to make the product safer, definitively not the behaviour of a company driven by cost, and they stress it brings farmers enormous financial and environmental benefits worldwide. For almost 50 years, Syngenta and its predecessor companies have relied on data to persuade the global safety watchdog that Gramoxone was safe, even though thousands of people continued to die. Tonight, we can reveal that that data was flawed and they knew it was flawed. The secret company documents spanning decades prove even the scientists producing that data used to convince the global safety regulators that Gramoxone was safe were concerned. They called it limited, only an estimation, not possible to reach definite conclusions, limited clinical data and on it goes. Yet Syngenta's case for getting lethal gramoxone past the watchdog in 2003 was largely based on this data. How do we know? Because a senior executive admitted it in 2019. It is this published human poisoning data which supports the current FAO. The FAO being the United Nations Global Safety Watchdog which governs herbicides. Well, it seems John Halings may finally be being listened to at the highest level. Channel 4 News has obtained a document written last year by the global safety watchdog, the FAO. And in it, the FAO says it is now requiring Syngenta to make modifications to its product. All of this, of course, far too late for families in Sri Lanka and so many other countries. The Sri Lankan government finally banned Gramoxone from 2008, as more than 50 countries have now done. The death rate there has dropped significantly. But many other markets remain, like India, where the death rate means Gramoxone is nightly news. Doctors are going on hunger strike, demanding that Gramoxone is banned. Uh, this is a very uh, pathetic situation for us because uh, the patients are dying in front of a doctor. So uh, we know everything. We know the prognosis. We know the results. The patient is going to die. And in 2019 alone, his hospital admitted 177 patients with paracot poisoning. 170 of them died. 
Syngenta told us almost all modern innovations like cars, trains or buildings can be used for suicide. Society needs to address mental health, not deprive the world of an important technology which improves human well-being. Try telling that to the hundreds of thousands of families left grieving around the world. So this saga ends where it begins, a multinational getting rich, selling lethal poison to poor farmers, a proposition it was forced to abandon years ago in the West. <laughs> Alex Thompson reporting. Well, we did ask Syngenta for an interview for inclusion in that report, but they declined. In a statement, the company said, product safety is extremely important to us. We find it heartbreaking that people have been harmed through accidental or intentional ingestion of Paracot. Paracot and similar products have reduced famine to the lowest levels in human existence. And the company flatly denies it puts profit before safety. If you've been affected by details contained in that report, you can seek support by going to the Channel 4 website. Go to channel4.com support.